And you'd prefer working in a studio. I'd prefer then. to be there. Yeah. And you like the live. You prefer mm -hmm. live uh, playing or yeah, or live is recording? fun. Yeah. You mean like live on a yeah, on stage? playing a, on a on, on. You know, I like being in the studio because you, you kind of have to do it right the first time. I think there's a little more pressure. And uh, I was going to say you you've thrown yourself into some interesting music combinations, and the, the playing with symphonies is one thing. And I remember last year you played with the Fort Worth Symphony. I was blown mm -hmm. away. And then you said, yeah, but you should hear us with the L.A. Philharmonic. And I thought, oh. But then within a month or so, you're playing, within a few weeks of that day, when you play with the Fort Worth Symphony, you're playing with Wynton Marsalis' band up in New York. Mm -hmm. Now, was that a challenge? I mean, these are, these are standard jazz cats. Yeah, but the mu music was more based on the blues. So what we did, we went in in just a little room, a little rehearsal room with Wynton, uh, his sax player, drummer, upright bass, and piano, and then myself and Willie. And we had a list of songs, um, Caledonia, um, Nightlife, uh, of course, in Georgia, stuff that you know, we'd already played with Willie, and just a list of, of blues tunes, um, which was kind of a common denominator between all of us. And we would just play, we would just kind of jam on these songs, and Winton was taking notes the whole time, and the next day, we had a rehearsal and he had everything mapped out, not really what to play, but who, who should play when. So maybe on like Bright Lights, Big City, Jimmy Reed's song, he kind of envisioned, he told me, he said, I envision, you know, a street scene in New York. So we want horn with, with the sax player and the trumpet myself, like these discord horn parts or these train sounds. I would make like a little train sound just for the intro that sounded like a street scene and, you know, it sounded like traffic, a lot of discord horns honking. And then we went right into the song, Bright Lights, Big City. So he would, he'd have the song mapped out and he'd say, uh, okay, Mickey would take the intro and then maybe play this, fill the second verse and take a solo. And that was our, that, that was our music for the whole show, really. It was just really a roadmap of when to play, not what to play. I listened to the live recording. It sounded like the first part of it's a little, everybody's feeling each other out. It's kind mm -hmm. of tentative. But by the middle of it, it's like you guys are a cohesive unit. Yeah, by the fourth show we did, two days of rehearsal, maybe four hours a day, not much rehearsal, and then uh, two, show, uh, two shows for two nights, so four shows. By the last show, you know, we had it figured out, and then we recorded the whole thing. So. Um, who else you been working with lately? You mentioned Calexico the other Calexico, day. Calexico, yeah, I just worked on Calexico's record, and then we talked about doing some stuff. There's going to be another Mickey Raphael album. Yeah, once every out. 20 years, we'll have to do something like that. And it won't be so difficult to find as the last one. Yeah. But so, these guys are great. Joey and John are just, you know, the rhythm section, and it's, I guess, their band. Yeah. Um, and we just went in the studio, and they were writing as, I mean, I was hired to play on the record, but it wasn't written yet. So, uh, you know, I'd be having coffee, and they'd come up with a little uh, rhythm section, a little rhythm uh, uh, chart, and uh, just kind of write as they're going along. So you're not locked into one thing. You're not Hopefully just not. Hopefully Willie not. Nelson's harmonica player, you've got other, other activities and other interests. Oh yeah, interests. I'm definitely available. for. What keeps you going with Willie? I mean, uh, come on, you guys have, have, have accomplished every goal that you could want to accomplish. Well, keeps, well, you mean why am I with? Yeah. What well, keeps I, you I love his playing. You know, I'm a fan of his. I love his writing. And the band here and now? I mean... Band, yeah, I mean, we've been together for 35 years. I mean, I'm one of the newer guys, so it's, <laughs> you know, and, and I mean, the band is called Family, and Willie and Family, and it really is a family. I mean, there's a, they're not really joking, but they say that, you know, we've been together than any of the wives. Well, the you know guys. what? When you total it up, it may be true, mm -hmm. though. And, and what, everybody gets along, you know, but then we all have our own, I mean, I, everybody kind of uh, has their private lives, too. I mean, we do go home every once in a while, you know. So and you like that? I do like going home every once in a while. So yeah. home is really at a physical place, not yeah, the I, highway? I, no, no, not for me. But uh, you like getting back out again when, and when you've had a break? After two weeks. I mean, after ten weeks, I'm not ready to go back for a while. I'm probably the one that likes being home the most because so I'm you, the, probably the newlywed. You've, the got, newly a, you've <laughs> got a shitload of more dates coming up, though, here. Yeah, but you we're doing two weeks on and two weeks off, which is really civil. It's working out okay. Yeah. I mean, a lot better. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I get a sense maybe things aren't quite as wild on the bus as they might have used to been. No, there's, they're really not. I mean, we leave every night after a show, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I think The Simpsons is about as wild as it gets on the bus. Well, I think the plane, just the ensemble seems to, the sound is toned down a little bit more. 
You can hear subtleties that you could use. And to it's almost building. acoustic. I mean, we've done away with the big drum kit. So Paul English, our drummer, is playing a snare with brushes. And uh, Jody, the guitar player, is playing acoustic guitar, acoustic electric. And uh, we, have, we have percussion. The percussion is you know, uh, Paul's brother. So it's uh, an acoustic piano. So it's, it's toned down a lot. And you're still recording a lot then. I mean, the family. Yeah, Willie goes in the studio crazy. all the time. So I mean, he has a studio here, so anytime he's home, He's recording. So do you record with him down here, or do you, do you ever come Not down? Not really. I mean, if, if there's a, a, a real project that he's scheduled, I'll come down for it. So you what's know? next for you personally outside of the Willie Orbit? I've got a project that I'm doing with uh, Sony Legacy called, that we're basing off of the uh, uh, Let It Be Naked uh, record. What we're taking, we're called Naked Willie is what we're calling it. And we're taking a lot of the old Willie tracks, three and four track recordings from the uh, 60s, and taking the strings and the vocals off. And All just those using that the, kind of where you lost Willie in the Nashville sound. Yes. And we're finding Jerry Reed, his guitar work all over it, and Chet Atkins. And wow. we're just taking it down to its, its basics, to its roots. And you're producing this then? Yes. And is it, can we look for it any time in the next couple years? I'll, I'll hopefully within the next year or so. What do you hear when you hear that? That was before you were with the band. Yeah, but that's what I, that, those were the first things that I ever listened to, and I really loved that, those years. You know? But I always thought that I'd really like to hear Willie and just the band you know, recording on these. And I asked Willie about it, and he said that the, when they went in and recorded these tracks, you know, after a couple of days, or, I mean, they would record the songs, he'd just written them, and then he'd leave with you know, the sound, that was, the basic sound in his ear, and then he'd come back two weeks later and they'd put strings and voices on it. <laughs> Where it am changed, I? It changed the whole dynamic of the song, so, well, which he never really could say anything about at the time because that was the Nashville sound. I mean, that's what they were doing. But you're lucky that now you work with a guy who's been through that and knows better and wants to do it mm -hmm. his way. Simplify and, it. So. And tonight you'll be at the backyard? The backyard, two nights, tonight two nights? and tomorrow night. This is kind Willie. of an Austin tradition now. Mm -hmm. It seems like every spring... Along with South by Southwest, y'all are out at the backyard. Yeah, we lucked out with the weather. We've had, you know, heaters on stage. It's been in the 20s before. So tonight, I think we're going to have a great We've night. been waiting for you. Yeah. And if anybody else, uh, if, if you're curious to learn more about Mickey, this issue, the next last issue of No Depression Magazine, uh, which is soon folding, sadly. Uh, I because do, of my article in there, probably. No, I yeah. thought that's what kept them going uh, for another few months. Uh, <laughs> I do a and a with Mickey as the most valuable player. And... Uh, he is a valuable player, and we're just glad you're here and uh, glad you took time to be with us today. Well, thank you for having me. Anytime.